Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for next week to 10 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to around the 9th of March and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. They run around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That gets us well into second half March. I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just say that first video really saying was our 6 a.m. upload and it could be live streaming at 8 p.m. this evening we'll have our Monday night live stream uh, live streaming ensembles watch uh, so that will be coming up at 8 p.m. I shall see you maybe uh, for that one please uh, like share subscribe on videos thank you so very much everybody um, for doing that we need to put on around 20 subscribers now that's all um, to get ourselves to 15.6k um, uh, so if you could give us a sub and tell your friends and family to subscribe to the channel as well and uh, you can watch Gav with your friends and family. If you want to do that, and uh, you know, be amazing. Thank you so very much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, let's start off with the uh, latest Polar Vortex status from Weather is Cool. Uh, they're reporting that SPV is currently weaker than all other years in the Era 5 record for today's date. So we've got another date record taking place in terms of the uh, weakness of the zonal wind. Um, the, zonal wind uh, the zonal mean zonal wind is at 10 at 10 HK 60 degrees north. Is today uh, down to minus 12.3 MS. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, so this shows it up very nicely. Uh, so the blue line where we've been with the uh, zonal wind previous season and where we currently are, we're just here. Uh, so date record has been achieved for uh, today's uh, zonal wind in terms of it uh, being in reverse. If we put in the GEFS, it's actually going to fall even further. So tomorrow will be uh, another date record as we go down to there. And also I've been keeping the zonal wind uh, negative, so keep, keep the zonal wind in reverse at 10 HPA for the next week or so uh, before it possibly goes a little bit um, uh, positive again as we go into uh, the middle part of March or towards the middle of March. However, still uh, significantly weaker than average, still under the black line, which of course is the trend. Uh, so we it's going to reverse at 30 HPA tomorrow as well. This is from the University of Berlin. Uh, so tomorrow's forecast generated from last night's ECM dose 12 then. The 28th of March shows that so I mean, uh, tomorrow will be at uh, minus 1.8, which again, you know, that uh, signifies a reversal of zonalines at both 10 and also 30 HPA. And uh, we're waiting to see what, if any, tropospheric response we get to this. Uh, right, central temperature is updated to yesterday, 26th of uh, February, currently sitting at 6.6, .6, which is 2.8 degrees above average. That will continue to tick down over the uh, next few days, well, the last couple of days of the month, I suppose. Um, these are the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at Langdugno today, another suggested location for this part of the video. If you'd like to have your local town or city feature, within this part of the video then please let us know in uh, the comments that we're more than happy uh, to uh, do that so starting off below average with the temperature at the moment generally you can go a little bit milder as we get into uh, towards the weekend that'll be under high pressure though uh, and then we go on into next week again quite a lot of scatter but maybe firming up on a colder interlude through uh late last part of the weekend into uh, next week, um, a white line, which is not something, is uh, below average. And there are several ensemble members that are going really quite cold, actually, through this period between around minus, uh, between around minus 5 minus 10 and 850 HPA. Towards the middle of March, it looks like there's a bit of a recovery in the temperature taking place. So the upper air temperature is looking up. Of course, that is a long way up. Precipitation-wise, there's going to be a lot of dry weather over the uh, next week or so. Perhaps a bit more unsettled, though, as we go further on through the second week of March and into the middle of the month. Could see some uh, precipitation coming through them. Much needed precipitation, uh, of course. Right, so the uh, temperature anomaly from the 27th of February to September March is going to be coming out colder than average, especially so for England and Wales. Most parts of Europe looking quite chilly as well. Precipitation anomalies 
from the 27th of February to the 7th of March. It's going to be drier than normal, not just for the UK, but for most parts of Europe. The latest info map from EarthNoSchool.net shows that we're under high pressure today. So, <laughs> yet again, we're high and dry with high centres of Scotland. We're bringing in this chilling, quite cloudy, northeasterly wind across England and Wales in particular. Right, let's start your chart day. Today, so it's latest UK met your run, talking for midnight on Thursday. High pressure sits, sit, high pressure sits over and to the north of the country, bringing in this uh, north east wind. That high pressure remains in control through the end week and into the weekend. The high pressure gradually reaching further northwards and westwards, though. So by the time you get through to Monday, this time next week, we've got a proper blocking feature setting up around Greenland and Iceland, a proper blocking area of high pressure there. Uh, with a trough over Scandinavia, we're starting to pull wind into a colder northerly direction. And uh, that looks as though we will be pulling in some pretty cold air from the north there uh, through next week, if the, geo, if the uh, UK there, midnight run is correct. Icon, uh, again, showing high pressure in control of weather on Thursday. And dominating through into the weekend as well. High pressure is trying to reach northward. And uh, by the end of the icon road, which again gets us to Monday, we are hinting at pulling in some colder air from uh, the north there. Not as cold as the uh, UK Met up to this point. But even so, looks like we've got uh, quite a nice ridge setting up through the Atlantic and trying to get up towards Greenland and Iceland as well. So we're very close to pulling in some really quite cold air from the north there by the early part or the beginning of next week. GFS Midnight Run, once again, showing high pressure dominating weather on Thursday. High pressure sits around the country through the weekend. On into next week, that high pressure gradually easing itself further northwards and westwards. But then it breaks down. So as we move up towards day 10, we start to uh, edge the low pressure in from off the Atlantic. So the GFS turns more unsettled and never really pulls in much of a northerly wind. Most parts of northern Europe are looking really cold here uh, by the time we get through the day time with a big trough of low sitting over northern parts of Europe. Then uh, area of high pressure tries to get going over that cold air across Scandinavia just beyond day 10. We go into a battleground UK type situation with low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic being blocked by the area of high pressure over a Scandinavia. Eventually, we start to send a jet stream onto northwest, southeast of Ireland. So it's an increasingly cool, maybe quite cold and unsettled through the second week of March with the uh, GFS midnight run. All courtesy of this area of high pressure over Scandinavia blocking the progress of these areas of low pressure from off the Atlantic. The GFS 6Z, again, with high pressure dominating the weather on Thursday. High pressure reaches north over the weekend. We pull in a bit of a half-hearted northerly here as we go through the uh, weekend. That's very close to the UK Mount Icon by the beginning of next week. Looks like we've got a proper sort of Greenland block getting going then uh, with high pressure centres around Greenland and Iceland. This trough of low pressure, all of the cold air over North York, backing further westwards. Um, but then the ridge of the block begins to break. So as we get towards day 10, again, same idea as a midnight run, really low pressure starts trying to come in from off the Atlantic. So we turn a bit more unsettled or turn unsettled by day 10. Quite cold though, with the area of low pressure pushing through the country uh, by the 10th of March. That gets the wind back into colder northerly uh, once again. And then heading up to the end of the uh, GFS 6 step run, again low pressure coming in off the Atlantic there. But always the idea that there's some higher pressure across the uh, across Scandinavia and generally to our north and northeast, which will be a complicating factor as these areas of low pressure try to get in off the Atlantic. If you enjoyed the video, then please can you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. We thank you so very much, everybody, um, for doing that. Just 20 subscribers is all we need to get to 15.6k. So if you could give us a sub, it would be amazing. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, right, GM, again, with high pressure in control of the weather on Thursday, the high pressure gradually pushing northwards through into the weekend. Very close to dropping in a cold northerly there uh, as we go through the weekend. We're just on the edges of it, just on the periphery. But this will be quite a cold ridge. It will bring overnight frost and whatnot, I would have thought. As we head up towards um, uh, the beginning of next week, uh, we're actually bringing in quite a, quite a, uh, quite a um, half-hearted northerly there. It's certainly cold there. Could be into the north and east. The main cold push, though, is away to our north and, and east over 
on the continent there. Um, and by uh, day 10, again, since the Jeff, there's just signs that we're beginning to break there a little bit. Low pressure trying to come in off the Atlantic. Depends how strong these cold areas. We've got to have fun and games with these areas of low pressure trying to come in from off the Atlantic. If the cold air backs far enough west um, over the weekend and into the early part of next week, it is one to keep an eye on this. Um, you know, there is a lot of cold air there sitting just to our norm. Let's show you the upper air temperatures. So you can see how cold it is over much of Scandinavia and into northern parts of Europe as well. If we back that cold edge a little bit further into the west, then we will have burning gains with these areas of low pressure trying to get in from off the Atlantic. And this is kind of like what the ECM is showing. So uh, this is the ECM midnight run, again with high pressure over the country on Thursday, bringing lots of dry weather. The high pressure then pushes northwards as we go through the weekend into the open next week, setting up a Greenland block. So again, that is very similar to uh, what the UK Met is doing, an icon. Um, now we've got a proper blocking feature around Greenland there. Very calm across much of northern Europe with these northerly winds. Low pressure trying to stage your tap from off the Atlantic. And uh, look at this, we uh, go to Tuesday next week, and the East are really drawing the battle lines here with very cold air trying to push in from the northeast, lower pressure trying to bring milder air up from the southwest. As we uh, upper air temperatures show that the battle lines are drawn there through the country through the early part of next week. Now that low pressure then zips away to the east. We actually bring down this uh, northerly across the country. So we all turn cold by the middle of next week with those uh, northerly winds there. Um, and then after that, we get to day 10 and low pressure again, trying to come in from off the Atlantic, but it's coming up against that cold air, trying to dislodge it. So, you know, <laughs> there could be fun and games with that. Next week could be quite interesting. Just one to watch at the moment. Um, no more than that, but, you know, there's a few hints here, but next week could be quite interesting with uh, cold and milder air battling with one another. Um, this is the precipitation uh, forecast based on the ECM run from Tometio.com. So a bit showery over the next few days with these east northeast winds. Then things drying out at the end of the week and into the weekend. But into next week, lower pressure coming in off the Atlantic. It brings, it brings some quite wet weather there uh, through the early to middle part of next week. Some of that does turn to snow on its northern edge. Wherever the battle lines are drawn, you know, between the cold mild red, could get some snow there. And eventually, of course, the cold air winds are battling, so the rain, sleet, snow gets pushed away, and we've got snow showers coming in from the north and from the northeast. And by day 10, another area of low pressure trying to come in from off the Atlantic again. That's coming up, coming up into that cold air. And, um, <laughs> well, we'll have to wait and see where that evolves to. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. Gets us to the 9th of March of the Icelandic Red Topics. 27 members of the ECM ensembles have low pressure, blurvish heights to our east and northeast and out in the Atlantic. There's a ridge over France and a blocking feature around Greenland. So all sorts going on there. We're trying to bring in milder air from the southwest here. Uh, and also bring, try to bring down cold air from the north as well. So <laughs> there's all sorts going on. There could be a battle uh, zone uh, within that. And they've got 24, which includes the control and the operational run. More unsettled with low pressure through the country, but it is in combination with this blocking area of high pressure around Greenland. And so that is, again, trying to force cold air into that trough of low pressure uh, with milder air to the south. So, uh, again, the chances there that uh, something quite interesting, i say no more than that, could take place next week. Now, in two weeks' time, this is the option that we've got. Gets us to the 14th of March, low pressure off the Atlantic into western parts of Europe. It looks like the blocking feature is reducing over Greenland. Um, although the jet stream is displaced a bit further southwards again uh, with that, actually. So uh, we'll have to wait and see how much of the milder air you know, makes it into the country from the southwest. It's two weeks away, so it's a long way off. Right, finally, the uh, CFS. So these are 500 millibar high tides breaking down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 27th of February to 5th of March. The coming week is dominated by high pressure sitting over and to the northern coast. So lots of dry weather, but it will be quite cold. Uh, week two will be the 6th to the 12th of March. High pressure going up to Greenland. Low pressure backing westwards across Europe. It looks like that will place us into a cold northerly wind there. Um, and maybe a little bit wintry at times. 
that sort of thing. Um, we go into week three, which is the 13th to the 19th of March, still about to low pressure over Northern Europe. Blocking feet should go more towards the Canadian side of Greenland and starting to raise the heights around Spain. I should start to bring in some uh, less cold, maybe milder, but uh, less cold air from off the Atlantic. And then week four will be the 20th to 26th of March with a mid-Atlantic ridge. Uh, so that would suggest like quite chilly weather, mostly dry, but quite chilly weather with winds in from a northwesterly direction. Nothing to suggest a particularly mild March here, I have to say. Um, so uh, maybe maybe March will be a chilly month. And who knows, possibly it could come out colder than February. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Um, oh, such a mild February. Maybe maybe we'll have a, uh, a March that is colder than the February before. It's been a while since that happened, I think. Anyway, uh, we're done. So if you enjoyed the video, could you please like, share and subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody. The dear man, drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this, all of our videos. And uh, don't forget to tell friends about Gaz Web Bids. We thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. 20 subs gets us to 15.6k. So please subscribe and uh, tell friends and family to subscribe as well. And uh, that's amazing. Thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Right, so uh, just to back to tomorrow. Um, no, say about live stream. So we're going to be live stream at 8 p.m. Uh, so we'll do Ensembles Watch. I shall see you live for that. And coming up tomorrow, we're going to have 6 a.m. upload. There'll be the EC 30-day forecast for Europe. And we'll have a 10 to 14 day as well. So keep checking back to the channel for more. But uh, for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.